evening. Um, broke earlier today or late last night uh, that Newcastle have had the first bid put in. Uh, it's open and transparent uh, for, for the club. And it's by a woman called Amanda Staveley. She's put in a £300 million bid for the club. Uh, her company's called PCP Capital Partners and they're backed up by a further £30 billion, um, by Asian and Chinese Arab interests. Uh, she was initially involved with the takeover at Man City. She helped with that in some way, um, which eh, worries me a little bit, because uh, it did take a long time for Man City to actually be competitive after they were purchased initially. Uh, Mike Ashley bought Newcastle for £134 million in 2007, so 10 years ago, so just before the financial um, the crash. Uh, so, But I've taken my notes and researched this a little bit today. I don't really know much more about Amanda Staley, apart from she's 44 and she's from Yorkshire, so there's that. She has, uh, in the past, bid for Liverpool. Um, so she obviously has an interest in, in football. She's been involved in a takeover before. Um, so, interesting. Uh, the thing is, Mike Ashley is, is not selling just yet. He wants to sell. He's put the club up for sale. But he's done this twice before, and this bid is at three hundred million. And one of the previous times he put up for sale, he was asking six hundred million. So that's half of what he estimated the value of the club at five, six years ago, whenever it was he put it up for sale for the last time. Uh, this is a legitimate bid, I believe. Um, but the fact that she basically was involved in Sheikh Mansour taking over Man City worries me slightly. Um, I mentioned in the previous video about this that I would prefer to see it in the hands of a local group of businessmen, possibly, or a local owner, or the fans having more or more of a stake. So this this worries me that yet again another club has been sold to people who have no actual interest in the, 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 the town, the club itself. Um, the society it is in, um, the community, um, so I have I have some reservations, uh, about it, but that's the way football's going at the moment. Um, I I had the view of we should go down the German sort of similar to the German model, um, or even even I know this is going to sound completely crazy to some people. Most people in this country don't know how this league works, but the NHL has. The, the NHL, which governs the, the league, similar to the FA in this country, in the Premier League, and then it issues franchises, so the owners will buy, and they have to pay, when they when they want to buy a club, or set up, set up a team, or relocate a team, they have to pay fees to the governing body, which then get shared amongst the other clubs equally, uh, or evenly. So when Vegas uh, this year signed up, well, last year signed up to become the thirty first NHL team. They they paid um, <clears throat> five hundred million US dollars, or I think six hundred and twenty Canadian million, and all that revenue gets shared out between the other thirty teams equally. So every other team gets an equal share uh, of the. Buying in money and half of that money that was paid in, so two hundred and fifty million goes to the the league itself, and the other two hundred and fifty million gets shared around the other thirty teams. So every time a club gets purchased, maybe they should do that because <clears throat> this is interesting. Um, that's just my viewpoint on on another thing, but this is interesting that there is a bid being put in there. Um, she was seen at the stadium two weeks ago, which was fueling speculation within certain circles. Now, I got all this information. So this could be like a few quid here or there, vagary. I got this information from the back of the Daily Mail this morning. Um, there it all is. Uh, you can read it. Um, so I take it with a pinch of salt that this is the exact amount of money that she's bid or certain information in there. Um, however, I do find that the Daily Mail sports section, at least, the rest of the paper is like, like a twaddle, but I find the Daily Mail sports section um, is pretty reliable. Um, I'm not a big fan of the newspaper, but it just happens to be that my family buy, buy the, the newspaper because they get nectar points. So I get a free newspaper and I 
I read the sports section. I find it's very similar to the Telegraph as well. So unfortunately, there's no real difference in what's been said. I bet you if I was to buy the Mirror or, or even God forbid the Sun, the if this story was in there, it's probably very similar. They it might be two hundred ninety million that she's bid or three hundred ten, but it's around the three hundred million ballpark is how much is 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 being put on the table. Uh, initially, but with her track record of helping at Man City, I can see that down the line someone else buying out stakes in the club and then taking over that way, and then it's out of British ownership and it's back into some grubby hands from the Middle East, which is what I don't want <clears throat> because it's just not where I. Th <sighs> because I look at Man City and I look at the other clubs that are owned by foreign owners and the lack of youth players coming through that are British <clears throat> and how if they do come through they sit on the bench I mean I get loaning them out to a lot of, a lot of championship league one league two clubs and I get players getting loaned out and that's great and they get some first new experience and the clubs in different positions in the ladder of the English Football League and the English Premier League can get a short term year long six months get a player in the squad while they're moving forward. Fine, I have no problem with that. But when it comes to them coming back to the parent club and then not getting played because the club owner is on releasing transfer funds and the manager, most likely a foreign guy, has brought in a Spaniard, a Frenchman, a German, a Pole, a Brazilian, a Uruguay, whatever nationality in. And that young British player is not, or that young local lad is not getting a chance. That's where I can see this going. I mean, Newcastle has got a great youth track record with the youth system. They have brought through so many great players. And the North East in general has, has given us some of the best English players this country has ever seen. <clears throat> ever. And some of our greatest matches. I mean, Sunderland win the FA Cup when they're in the second tier in the 70s. Brilliant. Um, the Newcastle sides of the mid to late 90s were brilliant. They, they came up short in the FA Cup and the league, but they were still... A damn good set of players. They had some damn good players. They had some great players. Shearer, Shea Given, etc. Uh, Gary Speed, the late great Gary Speed. Brilliant player. Um, Newcastle actually once broke the British transfer record to buy Shearer from Blackburn. So, back in the mid-90s, they were the the one of the clubs to play for. They, they were going places. It was unfortunate that they missed out on that Premier League and it was unfortunate that after ninety nine, they didn't kick on. They had, they even had some great input players. I, I've got nothing against foreigners playing in the English leagues or the British leagues, but when it gets to a, a point where the squad is dominated by foreign players and young talent not getting a chance to play regular first team football, because you look at our our, our youth, our under twenties, where it is World Cup win this summer, they've done what the the, the full team haven't done since sixty six. Only four or five of those players are getting regular first team football. But uh, this 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 uh, bid in for Newcastle is important because uh, if Mike actually keeps trying to bump it up, I don't think, in all wisdom, uh, he'll get the money he's asking. I think he, even if he settles the three hundred, he's still made a profit. Because if you take out the revenues from ticket sales and TV, which he's made, and transfers, which I think actually buying cheap. I think he comes out of this with a fair bit of dollar in his back pocket. And the fact that that will plug some of his other companies' black holes where they've lost share price due to all his scandals, I think, long story short, he, he's the type of guy who wants to get deals done quick and brutal and he doesn't really care. So um, hopefully he's he's booted out of English football. Um, if you're a Rangers fan, I said this the other night, you have a wild awake sleep so buggers off out of your nice club um, <clears throat> because him getting involved with Rangers worries me. With his track record at Newcastle, um, but you know, but no, this this bid has to be taken quite seriously. Um, there are I think three other bids, but they haven't released the details of them. There's been at least four bids, and this is one of them. This is the one that's public. This is the one we know about, and this is the one that's probably most likely to gain traction and to go somewhere. If she does buy the club, I do hope she doesn't start selling it bit by bit uh, for the foreign people who are backing her up. I I, I honestly hope to God that. The shares in the club, if she puts on the stock market, all the fans buy the shares. And the Newcastle fans, if they own the club, I swear to God, it'll be much better run than it is now. Um, I've, I've long advocated for fan ownership of of clubs, um, much like other models in other sports. 
and in other leagues, which work well. I think van ownership is the way forward, but unfortunately the FA don't see it that way and the Premier League are obsessed with making money rather than developing the game in this country. We are taking backward steps internationally. Um, Northern Ireland and Republic have got playoffs and that's great and a lot of their players are obviously based in the UK, but I think most of their players play in England, some in Scotland. So if they get into the World Cup, that is a positive, I guess. Um, the fact that Wales had Wales or Ireland had to miss out even on a playoff spot is unfortunate. And Scotland, well, I've done a video about them and they are doomed. Um, but there we go. Uh, the issue, what the issues I have, I have reservations, obviously, but I think she's a far better bet than Mike Ashley, and I think most Newcastle fans would agree. If this deal falls through, I feel very, very, very. I have a lot of sympathy for Newcastle fans and the team. I hope it doesn't. I do hope someone buys that club off him because he has done nothing but really make a mess of it. Um, Ex-players and managers have said lots of negative things about him. I mean, Shay Given, I think, said he felt he was pushed out by Mike Ashley before he went to uh, Man City and Villa. He then finished his career at those clubs. Um, won an FA Cup with City and came as a runner-up with Villa. So, and he won Premier League as well. So, Shay, Shay Given, um, who was a... And Steve Harper as well. They were two long-serving goalkeepers there both one number one and number two they were both fighting over that number one spot and Shea Gibbon was slightly better than Harper they, they're both about the same age they were long servants of the club but they were both treated like absolute crap by the club after Mike Ashley took over they were forced out of a club that they basically devoted most of most of their playing careers to um, so ex-players have been very negative about him ex-managers have described it behind the scenes as a Mickey Mouse show uh, <coughs> so there is that fans um I did have a comment from a Newcastle fan who's a season ticket holder and he did correct me on the amount of protests they've had. Um, the placards in the ground, that is a given, and the booing, but outside they've had two official protests and unfortunately they weren't weren't really backed by people. And so until fans actually start voicing... When St James's Park has empty seats, that's when you know you've got a problem. And unfortunately the Newcastle fans are far too loyal. They should have, they should have a long time ago boycotted games seriously and... Left the whole stadium empty. That's the only way to start getting your message across. I mean, the Liverpool fans started doing their protests about the ticket price. The ticket prices haven't come down. They've been frozen. And the thing is, the TV deal, why are we paying more money? The TV deal they've got, and the, big, the so-called big six clubs want to have even more out of that money and give less sharing revenue to the other other 14 clubs in the Premier League which I think is naughty and wrong um, because as soon as Wenger leaves Arsenal they're not going to be in the top six they're going to completely collapse I believe um, Chelsea obviously flip and flop between managers every season uh, they've had 14 managers or 14 managerial appointments if you count Mourinho and Gus Hiddink both been there twice since Abramovich has been in charge of that club so Newcastle not the only club to go for a manager a season Chelsea do it regularly um Leicester have started doing it, all, and the Leicester sacking as well of Shakespeare. The players, according to Appleton, are feeling very raw and hurt and angry about it. And apparently, so they were quite a tight knit group. They just were struggling on the pitch, and you're gonna have come go through periods of where you lose form. And the unfortunate thing about British sport is we have a relegation system in most of sports and promotion. Whereas if you go to America. You have franchise sport where there's a set amount of teams in that league and there's a set amount of teams in the league below, which is normally where they loan players out to to get them up because that's their affiliate. And there's a set of so there's normally two or three pro leagues where the main pro league send their development players down and then the team below send their development players further down. So if they're younger, and there is no promotion relegation, so the three tier system goes in development. Development and injury recovery and get back to fitness and get game time and then full-time squad. And that's where these American owners don't get it. We get relegated and we get promoted and that can have a severe effect on your finances and, and going forward and, and player wages. They, they seem to forget that. They actually seem to forget that we got up and down. Another concern I have. But anyway, I'm going to stop that there. Um, this is a positive note. Um, I do hope she does buy the club. I do also hope that she doesn't sell the club on or bring in another Arab takeover or Chinese takeover because some of their dealings are a little bit suspect and 
the authorities and the FA seem to be a bit meh. We're getting rich off it. So we shall see. But she's still got to be more positive than Mark Ashley. I've been very critical of him over many, several videos now, and I've actually, in my personal life, outside of it, I very, I only go in Sports Direct if I have to, if I cannot find good sports gear elsewhere. Because it is cheaper in there, but the prices are now going up. So I only go in there because it's cheaper than, let's say, go into a department store with a sports section or JD Sports. And it's cheaper by JD Sports, but only about, about 10, 20 quid now. It's not as cheap as it used to be. So if that keeps happening then I have no reason to go in there and I, I always find in his stores the staff look very unhappy uh, they never seem to have enough of them and I've had friends work for his companies and they have nothing but horror stories so he's not even a nice guy to work for um, <clears throat> anyway I'm going to leave that there please like and subscribe please comment uh, if you have any other um, ideas or discussion again comment and I shall have another video for you soon